Why am I upside down? What is going on? I don't know. Oh, you know what? I have been feeling a little off lately, like kind of backwards or turned around or upside down. Well, this is kind of weird. Well, I don't know. Well, I'm glad you guys are here with me today, even if I am upside down. Don't you all feel like that sometimes? Just a little upside down? Oh well, guys, we're gonna make the most of it. Let's go worship.
thoughts right and be the the best version of me to know that you're chasing after me it makes me want to run to where you are god you make this journey worth it i give you all my heart when i don't know what to do you help me When I don't know what to do, you help me figure it out. I run to you. When I need a solution, I have no doubt that I will run to you. When I don't know what to do, you help me figure it out. God, I run to you. When I need a solution, I have no doubt. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play!
Hey everybody, I'm Graham, candy connoisseur, and I'm here to talk about individuality. Individuality is discovering who you are meant to be so that you can make a difference. Every single one of us is an individual. We were all made by God in our own unique ways. When you look at yourself in a mirror, you can see all the work that went into making every little detail. I see you. And it's not just what you look like that makes you an individual. Your whole personality sets you apart from everyone else in the world. You should really look at yourself sometime. Really look at yourself inside and out. Like when I look at myself, I think I'm pretty cool. Like a big bowl of ice cream. Uh, and there are things about myself that I like. I love that I'm good at problem solving. I have this ability to understand when something is wrong and immediately think of ideas to fix it. Oh, and I like that I'm funny. Like, have you ever heard of this one? Knock, knock. Oh, right. <laughs> I need someone in the room for that joke. Anyways, I, the punchline is, I didn't know you could yodel. Oh, I think I'm funny. Actually, now that I'm really looking, I'm thinking there are some things that I don't like about myself. Like, sometimes I procrastinate. That means when there's something that needs to be done by a certain time, Sometimes I wait till the last possible minute to get it done. Oh, and sometimes I have a bad temper. When someone disagrees with me about certain things, I can get really angry really fast. Uh, and sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I can be really selfish. There, a little cool a little gross, and a lot messy. That's how I can see myself sometimes. Maybe you see yourself that way. Well, after today's story, you might discover that there's a whole new way to see yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm really gonna eat that. See? I'm funny. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 9. Verses 9 through 13. Everyone in the shore town of Capernaum knew who Matthew was. You may also call me Levi. But few people actually liked him. Well, that's rude. Truth is, Matthew had put himself in an awkward situation. He was Jewish, like his relatives and friends, but he chose to work for the hated Roman government. Just trying to make a living. Matthew was a tax collector for the Romans, and tax collectors were known to lie about the amount of money people owed. Five gold pieces. But, but it was only three last year. Five, and not a shekel less. After collecting money, the tax collectors would keep the extra for themselves. Many of them grew rich by robbing the poorest people in their towns. In fact, tax collectors and sinners were considered to be the same thing. Hey, I work hard. But no matter how hard Matthew tried to polish his own image, deep down, he knew how others saw him. He heard their whispers as he crossed to the other side of the street to pass his booth. I do not know how that man sleeps at night. He's the worst, doing the Romans' dirty work. But one day, the crowds of Capernaum were full of different news. Did you hear about Jesus of Nazareth? The rabbi? He's not only a teacher. This morning, he made a lame man walk. That's just talk. My son was there. He saw it with his own eyes. The whole city was ablaze with the story. And even Matthew, who was tucked away in his tax collector's booth, was fascinated. Maybe the man just had a limp or something? Oh no, this Jesus has real power. He cares about people. Well, maybe. Anyhow, you owe three gold pieces. Three? How are we supposed to eat for the rest of the season? Take it up with the governor. I'm just doing my job. I bet Jesus would have something to say to you. Next. Within a short time, the market became even more crowded. Jesus! 
Jesus is coming this way. From his booth, Matthew craned to see. Though he was curious, deep down, he had to admit that no rabbi would have kind words for him. I'm a fool. Even my own people hate me. Suddenly, the crowds parted. Just down the street, Matthew could see a tall man with a rugged face and piercing eyes. A group of common fishermen followed at his heels. It's Jesus. Matthew watched, waiting for the rabbi to pass him by. Instead, Jesus stopped right in front of Matthew's booth. Um, rabbi? Jesus looked directly at Matthew, reading every single thought in his heart. Nice day. Not too hot. Not too cold. Jesus kept his gaze fixed directly on Matthew's face. Come, follow me. Shocked, Matthew looked around. The crowd has fallen away. Who? Me? Jesus nodded. Matthew gaped. He had no doubt in his mind that Jesus knew every single thing about him, even everything he'd done wrong. But still, Jesus wanted Matthew to join him. Oh, well, yes. Matthew found himself leaping up from his seat and rushing out of his booth to join Jesus on the street. It's um nearly dinner time. Would you like to eat at my house? To Matthew's amazement, Jesus and his followers turned their steps towards Matthew's home. Quickly, Matthew sent out word to everyone he knew. Come to my house for dinner. Matthew, who had expected to eat alone, found himself hosting the most famous rabbi in town for dinner, along with a ragtag group of fishermen, tax collectors, and other outcasts. Jesus doesn't care what I've done. He thinks I can be better, that I'm worthy to follow him. But while Matthew rejoiced to discover his brand new identity, the city's religious leaders were horrified by what Jesus had done. They sidled up to Jesus' disciples. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? You know, that's a great question. Jesus overheard the religious leaders and answered the question himself. Those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Preposterous. From then on, Matthew followed Jesus everywhere. With his own eyes, he had seen more of the things that Jesus had done than nearly anyone else. Near the end of his life, he wrote down all the stories he had witnessed and gathered so that others too could know Jesus. Before he was one of Jesus' disciples, Matthew was a tax collector. Tax collectors were kind of known for cheating people out of their money. Other people would have called Matthew a sinner, and it would have been true. Matthew, like everyone else in the world, sinned, which means he did things that God wouldn't want him to do. I wonder if Matthew saw himself this way, a little gross, a little messy. He might have felt ashamed even worthless. But then something happened. He met Jesus. Jesus chose Matthew to follow him, even though Matthew sometimes did things he shouldn't, even though he was a sinner. Jesus wants you to follow him too. He wants you to know him and trust him. And it doesn't matter what you've done or how you see yourself. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for your sins. You are forgiven and he loves you just as you are, mess and all. It's almost like when Jesus looks at you, he sees through the mess. He sees past your mistakes. He sees the individual you that God created. When you believe in and follow Jesus, it can help you see yourself through his eyes. Mmm, and it's so much better that way. The one thing to remember today is this. Knowing Jesus changes how you see yourself. I definitely like myself a lot better without mayonnaise. Blech. <laughs> mm. I'll see you next time. Hey there, it's your friend Babs coming at you with our memory verse. Are you ready? Let's read this together bit by bit. I'll read part of it and then you read it. How you made me is amazing and wonderful. 
Now you say it. How you made me is amazing and wonderful. I praise you for that. I praise you for that. What you have done is wonderful. What you have done is wonderful. I know that very well. I know, I know that, that very well. Psalm 139, verse 14. Psalm 139, verse 14. Great job. Okay, now let's read the whole thing together. Ready? How you made me is amazing and wonderful. I praise you for that. What you have done is wonderful. I know that very well. Psalm 139, verse 14. Nice work. Keep practicing. You're going to do great with this one. I just know it. See you again next week. Bye-bye. Well, I'm still upside down. But I love that when we get to know Jesus, he can help us change the way we see ourselves. So let's talk to him about this conundrum. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. I thank you that Jesus showed us who you are and that when we get to know him and his story and learn about his life and death and resurrection, we actually get to change the way we see ourselves. And when we follow him and in his ways, we get to, to change the way we actually feel. Father, I pray that you would for everyone, including me, who feels upside down or inside out today, you would help us rearrange the way we feel. Bless my friends with just deeply knowing how much you love them and how much you're leading them on in the right direction. Lord, we love you and we trust you and we give you this whole morning. In your name I pray, amen. Oh, I, I, oh. Oh, oh my goodness, that is really amazing that when you take your feelings to Jesus, when you know how God loves you, he really does change the way you feel about yourself or the way you see yourself. You can feel like you've made every wrong decision in the book, but you take them to God who said, I sent Jesus, I sent Jesus to die and, and then he rose again to show his power because nothing no bad decision you make, no mistake you make can ever separate you from God's love. And that's the truth. And that's why when we get to know Jesus, his story, his power, his resurrection, it actually changes the way we see ourselves and the way we feel about ourselves because nothing, friends, no mistake, no bad choice, nothing can separate you from God's love because of Jesus. And that's why we have to get to know him and his story. And I loved hearing about Matthew today. It's incredible. Matthew felt so bad about himself because of the choices he had made, but nothing could separate Matthew from God's love. And the truth goes for us too. I love that we started upside down and ended right side up because that is God's plan for you. Always, 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 no matter what. Isn't that encouraging? Oh, friends, shake it out. If you feel upside down today, don't worry. There is hope. Talk to someone about it. Ask questions. And you know what? I always love to talk to you about it. So find me. <laughs> oh, friends, whew, let's take a deep breath. I feel so much better. I hope you have a great week. I love you and I'll be thinking about you. I'll see you next time. I know the reason why my feet can't stop. My heart can't help but sing. It's a one So
You're the reason. 